Welcome to my Star Trek The Beginner's Guide explaining how ship abilities work in the game. So, this is pretty much, you can treat it as a follow-up to my complete beginner's guide to Star Sector. If you don't know what I'm talking about, at the top right of the screen, right about now, like around here when I'm moving my mouse, there will be a little uh, card displayed linking you to my beginner's guide to Star Sector if you want to know how to get started from the very beginning and all the ship controls and stuff. But I'm assuming you already know a little about, about the game and how to kind of do a bit of, tiny bit of trading and uh, pilot your ship and move around your ship and stuff. Because this guide is going to be covering uh, special abilities for ships in um, Star Sector. So we're going to click on this trade goods menu here and then go over to the fleet screen here. Because I'm going to show you where to find where the special abilities of your ships actually are. So the first one we're going to cover here is the wolf. We're just going to move over this question mark and click it. And right here is where it will show you what special ability your ship has. Special abilities by default are activated with the F key on your keyboard. So if it's a defensive ability, you get to F the enemies up if you like that kind of humor. Anyway, um, here with this wolf class frigate, I'm now going to explain how its ability works, the phase skimmer, because, uh, well, it's kind of a unique ability and a lot of ships in this game actually have abilities that are very, very not very similar, but a lot of ships in this game share special abilities with each other. So, we're just going to go to the refit screen here, click Run Simulation, spawn the old cargo freighter that are spawning heaps in my beginner's guide to Star Sector, and start flying around the wolf to show you how the ability works. So, the wolf's special ability is the Face Skimmer, like I mentioned before. What it does is, if you're flying forward, for instance, and you press F, it'll jump you forward. If you're flying sideways, or kind of like, I don't know, going a bit diagonal like we are now, and you do it, it'll jump you sideways, but it will turn, uh, apparently always point you kind of, uh, I guess, with your um, uh, reticule and like just, just the for uh, front of your ship facing kind of forward towards the screen. Also, the face skimmer can be used to uh, teleport backwards as well, as you can see there. I guess it kind of always teleports you at a bit of a weird angle, but the wolf is such a nimble and fast ship, it doesn't really matter, honestly, in my opinion. Now, the important thing to remember about all ship abilities is uh, this down here. This will show you the name of what ability you have, in this case the face skimmer. This is how many charges you have left on the wolf, and this says it's ready. So if we just face skim a whole heap of times, it'll say it's not active anymore, and we have to wait for this little green bar here to recharge. This affects different ship uh, special abilities differently, and uh, yeah, that actually pretty much would cover it for the wolf, except I want to show you what not to do. This here is a big old uh, cargo freighter, like I said I'd spawned before, and we're now going to phase skim into it. Don't do this in your actual save, it's a terrible idea. This is why. Okay, that actually we actually ended up dodging that apparently, which was a good idea. But I'm just going to try and fly towards it one more time and uh, phase skim at just the wrong moment. Yeah, that that's why you shouldn't do it. We phase skimmed into it and then smacked into it and it's big old beefy shield collided with our no shields that were up at that time and we've taken heaps of damage and basically ripped the armor off the front of our ship and taken a big chunk of hull damage. So that's why you want to be careful when face skimming because you might accidentally skim into an enemy fleet and then have no charges left to back out. However, one thing to remember with uh, face skimmer ships such as this wolf here, and I'm just going to end the simulation and uh, in fact just leave this entire save and just exit without saving and load up another save, is that you might find uh, later on, you might find, uh, let's say you found a, a pirate wolf, like a wolf that you just bought off a bunch of pirates, it may not have as many charges as it usually does because the pirates have taken poor care of it. You should always remember to look up this kind of stuff and uh, read what it says on information of ships when purchasing them off uh, different places. So for example here we have a degraded face skimmer and it's only listed as two here because it only has two charges and then it has to recharge as well. In fact I'm pretty, uh, don't don't quote me on this, but I'm generally a bit sure that um, for pirate wolves they also have slightly worse systems than a regular wolf. Uh, the, the upside I'm guessing is that they maybe cost a little less supplies in your sh fleet and perhaps they also um, generally just... Uh, I think they might be a little bit cheaper. Okay, so now that we've covered the phase skimming ability, the next ship, the next special ability we're going to cover is uh, a weapon overcharge on, and that is mainly featured on uh, this ship here, the Hammerhead, although it does feature on other ships. 
So we're just going to run the simulation with the loadout it has, deploy the cargo freighter once again because it's a big chunky target, and we're going to start flying around the hammerhead and using, uh, that's what it's called apparently, an accelerated ammo feeder. Thank you game for telling me. So, this is what it's like when your ship is firing normally. When you activate this accelerated ammo feeder, it'll make this uh, noise letting you know it's activated. This sound, in my opinion, is quite pleasant in the ears, and I like to hear it. I'll let you listen to it now. Yeah, so there's the sound. Your weapons will glow to let you know that the ability is active, and also this bar here will fill up. Once it is filled up completely, the ability then needs some time to recharge, and it will go down again, and once it's fully down, you can activate it again. The great thing about this ability is that there isn't really any downsides and you can't get yourself in hot shit like you can with the phase scanner ability for the wolf. Because as you've seen before with the wolf, you can phase yourself into places where you don't want to be. The ammo feeder just means you shoot faster. If you're smart enough flying a hammerhead or any other ship that has it, you won't get into many hot situations as the wolf and you'll generally do better. Now let's actually see the ammo feeder in action. Here we are firing normally, all our shots are generally connecting to this cargo freighter, and then we activate the ammo feeder, and our ship just goes ballistic and starts ripping it apart. In fact, if we just click on it and then click uh, on this tactical screen and click R, then you can see all the armor on the front of it is completely gone. And we're actually just going to fly a little bit to the side and try to hit a little bit on the um, side of it to show you how quickly you can rip off armor. Yeah, as you can see, a few hits and the ship blown up. In fact, the explosion was so big, it ripped off some of the front of our hammerhead, but that's my fault for not having the shield up at the time. Yeah, there you have it for the ammo feeder, and now, um, even though we got a little bit hurt here, we wouldn't have gotten hurt if I was smart about the shields. So that is that ship there covered. Now, for the next ship, we're going to be using... Uh, yeah, this one here, this cargo freighter, because... Even though it's not a good combat ship, let me just check if it's got the right ability. Yes, it does. It's got the active flare launcher. So even though we will probably lose this fight here, it's an excellent ship to show you how the flare launcher works. Because the uh, next ship's special ability we're going to be covering is the flare launcher. And it is used on a heap of different ships. So the Wolf is one of the only ships that has the face skimmer. The Hammerhead is one of the only ships I know of that has. Like, there's only a few others that have like the ammo overdrive thingamajig. However... Uh, many, many, many ships have this uh, flare launcher. So we're going to run the simulation, and luckily there's a fail recording I had before, previously where someone was clanking around the kitchen too much, so I had to re-record it, and we're going to basically deploy one of these buffalo ships. It's a pirate ship usually, quite a crappy ship, not that good, but our ship is even worse, so most are going to lose the fight. The main thing I want to show you here is the pirate ship here, deploying a bunch of its missiles to try and shoot us because as you probably guess from the name the flare launcher distracts missiles oh okay apparently i didn't know this but apparently certain flare launchers will actually work differently so the flare launcher we have here will shoot missiles i mean green balls out of the ass of the ship kind of making it look like it's pooping if you're okay with that juvenile kind of humor and then they will fly towards the uh any missiles and get rid of them. However, if we just end the simulation here, we can now, I can now show you that this Colossus here has a different kind of flare launcher. We're just going to remove the fighters from it so they don't rip apart the buffalo because from our previous test day, the fighters just killed any uh, buffalo ship and then we had uh, no real way to actually um, fight it and show off what the flare launcher can even do and that wasn't that good. So we're now just going to fly in with the regular flare launcher because this is the one I'm actually um, used to using. In my opinion, that green one that shoots out behind the ship is actually a better flare launcher than this one because this one sometimes doesn't work. So here we are, bringing up the shield. It's going to fire its missiles. And as you can see, a bunch of missiles are now all trying to tra attract the flares, which is exactly what you would um, expect a flare launcher to do. And I have a feeling that if we angle this ship correctly, we might actually be able to win this fight because by the look of it, this ship here has got no armor on it whatsoever. However, it seems to be overloading our shield uh, very quickly and uh, just in general, uh, yeah, we might, we might lose this fight, but it doesn't matter. I can just end the simulation here because that is the flare launcher covered. That's generally what it does. You can spam either of those systems over and over again. It doesn't really matter. They have no downsides and I recommend doing that. It's also featured in some other much beefier ships such as the Apogee, which is an explorer class ship good for scanning planets and stuff. Moving on. 
the next ship system we're going to cover is the maneuvering thrusters. I'm going to kind of be covering this twice because we're first going to be using a kind of slowish ship here, the mule, and then we're also going to be right after using a much faster ship with maneuvering thrusters to show you the difference. So we're going to click run simulation here and we're going to get some kind of slower ships such as this one here that will spawn fighters and the buffalo again and for allies we're going to spawn two other mules to help us so you'll be able to see some allies in action using the ability. So here we are flying normally, normally and the maneuvering thrusters as the name kind of suggests when you activate it you will then get a much better turning radius enabling you to kind of like fly the ship much better and also once it's done being used up it will cool down like normally and again there is no real downside to this special ability it's just all around a good ability because also when flying if you pay attention here to the speed and then activate it then your speed will also increase by a large margin so maneuvering thrusters are not only good for um oh apparently i didn't even spawn in the enemies let me actually just do that Oh, they're right here. <laughs> okay, this actually be an excellent way to show uh, maneuvering thrusts potentially. Nope, 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 this is not working. <laughs> I was going to try and show you maneuvering thrust as being useful for getting you out of a sticky situation, but apparently here I'm just going to uh, die horribly. Oh well, what can you do? Time to uh, transfer command over to one of the other ships and uh, fly that instead so I can show you the maneuvering thrusters in action because I really didn't expect that to happen. So yeah, just in general, maneuvering thrusters are great for catching up to enemy ships, perhaps fleeing or just turning your ship around, all of the above. And on slower ships like this mule, it can really benefit you, but it can also really benefit you on faster ships. If it, I kind of didn't really, really need to fly, fly closer because even though you haven't seen any of the allied ships in action, using maneuvering thrusters, uh, it's kind of pretty self-explanatory what they do and everything. They allow you to turn faster and stuff. However, I'm now going to show you what I mean by maneuvering thrusters in action on a much smaller ship. Let me just change the weapon groups and uh, make both of my um, guns here fire on the same because previously one was firing and then the other was firing. And we're just gonna run simulation Go up against the cargo freighter again and deploy. So as you can see here, this ship here, this um, brawler class ship called uh, Old, I, Old Earth or Bust, like we want to get to Old Earth or Bust, kind of a hitchhiker's reference, I like it, um, flies generally decently fast, but then when you activate the maneuvering thrusters, it really, really gets fast. And it can also be used, used to do some stuff like some six turns here, and then we can activate the shields and kind of do a nice old drift by the um, enemy ship. Also, if you notice there, we're just going to deactivate these shields again. If we activate the maneuvering thrusters and then fly and kind of do the same turn thing and then kind of turn, we actually are flying through space even though we're not pressing any buttons faster when we have the maneuvering thrusters on because they're assisting us maneuvering even when we got the engines turned off and they will do that all the time when they're on. But if you have them off, your ship will immediately slow down because it is not being boosted along by the maneuvering thrusters. And as you can see, they're really useful for getting behind enemy ships, stuff like that, doing kind of sneak attacks. Like right here, we're pretty much almost ready to uh, rip apart this enemy ship's engines. And once you rip apart the engines of a ship, it will generally stop working properly and won't be able to even turn. Yeah, as you can see, like some of the engines there are already just offline. And now it's even got a flame out, which means all engines are offline and it can't move at all, letting us just continuously rip apart from the behind, which could be very useful if this ship had better guns than just a few lame machine guns. And that is pretty much maneuvering thrusters covered. Now, that is honestly uh, what I'd say, that is honestly what I'd call it for the non-spoiler section of this video. The reason why I'm telling you that is because many many ships in this different in this game have the same abilities. So this cargo, con uh, this fuel tanker here. Also, if we just look, if we just go into the fleet screen and uh, press the question mark on it, or we just even look at it, it has the flare launcher. This smaller ship here also has the flare launcher. These ships, all mules, all have maneuvering thrusters. Heaps of ships, and I checked this on the wiki, so I'm not just pulling the information out of my ass here. Heaps of them will have either flare launcher or maneuvering thrusters which is why I'm saying this is pretty much it for the non-spoiler section of the video because the other two abilities I'm going to cover pretty much real soon are going to be abilities that are on 
bigger ships that you would probably get much in the in more of the late game section of the game which could potentially be considered spoilers just like certain other things in the game so you don't want to be spoiled spoiled click off the video now and i thank you for watching as much as you have already if not stick around and i'll explain how those systems work so for those of you who have stuck around, oh, by the way, I will also be including timestamps in the video so you can check when the uh, spoiler section is over and not. So what we're going to do here is we're just going to exit the main menu and not save. And we're going to load up another save of mine where I have one of the ships with the uh, one of the abilities, the burn drive. So we're just going to go here and we're going to... Um, okay, that's not the right place. I need to just go to one of the nearby stations this shouldn't take very long at all because i'm just going to hold shift to uh speed it up we won't even need to put a cut in here we can just fly over real quick ah uh apparently they want to like fight us something we're just going to use a special ability point here to like ignore them and then fly to their place because we're not trying to fight them here we're, we're just trying to uh show you the ability of one of my ships so this here is a dominator i have and if we just go to the fleet screen here and then press the question mark on it, this ability it has is the burn drive. You may find this on some smaller ships in the game, but I think this displaying it on a big old capital ship is one of the uh, best ways to actually show you how this thing functions. And uh, before, we weren't really reading what the actual thing says, but this time it's got a bit more of a description, so I read it to you. Provides a massive speed boost at the expense of being unable to turn or use shields. Collisions cause a flame out while, while the system is active. So let me explain what this means in layman's terms because this could sound like a bunch of gibberish. First of all, it provides a massive speed boost at the expense of being unable to turn or use shields. Yeah, that makes sense when you really break it down. So you activate the ability, it pretty much activates all thrusters at the behind of your ship, pretty much puts you into ramming speed, well, speed, and you're unable to turn completely while using it, so don't even try. Also, it'll immediately disable your shields, but so if you were thinking of ramming an enemy ship with the shields on, that's a no-no, and that's not going to happen, because the second you use this ability, it turns off the shields. Also, collisions can cause a flame out while the system is being active. If you remember previously, when we were up against that fuel tanker, we, um, and we were fighting it, there was a point where, um... We shot the enemy enemy ship's engines enough that it actually came up with the words behind it, flame out, like I was explaining before, with the enemy ship's system, engine systems are disabled. If you ram something too hard and fast with the this dominator here, it will cause a flame out on your engine systems even if someone is not shooting them. In fact, um, let me just show you that in action. So we're going to just deploy this cargo freighter here, and the first time we're going to use this system is just to show you it in action. So... Here we are, I'm trying to like use the uh, D and uh, A keys to move my ship. You can probably even hear the click clack of the keyboard, but it's just not working because we use the ship system to boost ourselves forward and uh, yeah, we couldn't really turn with it on. So now I'm just going to press C to bring my ship to a sort of complete halt and we're going to just freaking ram this ship here. Yeah, and uh, as you can see, we hit it real front on and we kept on actually even pushing into it. This here is um, actually a kind of not, it's not that good of an example because as you can see here, our point defense systems were really uh, tearing it apart because we have more point defense systems than the enemy ship here has. And also this ship is a bit of a wimp because it's a cargo freighter. It generally doesn't fight back enough. So I'm going to end the simulation and start right back up again. And we're going to be pretty much facing off against the exact same type of ship almost that we are a dominator so it's going to be dominator versus dominator and i'm going to try and ram into it and show you why ramming a ship that about is the same size as you with the same weapon systems can be a terrible idea so we're just going to fly towards it get a bit closer and they're already firing oh they're apparently actually burn drive two here so it's apparently burn drive on burn drive but here as you can see we got the worst end of the deal here by far because we suffered a flame out on our engines now the engines are being shot meaning that we also have like suffering double flame out from all their weapon systems and also we aren't really turned around the right way so we can't even fire back at them or i mean we could have raised our shields there but i was trying to uh i was trying to talk while um fighting them which kind of as you can tell lowers my combat ability because trying to keep the commentary while fighting is generally uh it makes stuff harder generally yeah so even though we didn't die there a lot of our armor did get hit and now our flux is almost too high 
which we generate doing a terrible job of fighting this dominator. So you may be thinking at this point, gee, burn, burn drive is kind of a real shit system, isn't it? No, honestly, it's not. It can be used to reposition yourself, also running away. If the enemy fleet is chasing you and you activate burn drives, you can potentially outpace some um, sl smaller ships than you by just continuously activating the burn drives over and over. Also, we're going to bully our favorite little buffalo here and show you why the burn drive is a good idea to ram smaller ships. Because if you just take into consideration basic stuff like mass and weight in general, stuff like that, and friction, you see soon here why ramming a smaller ship is actually not such a terrible idea. As you can see, he did not get away. We might have suffered a bit, uh, this kind of a bit of damage on the front of our ship here, but look at his, it is just smoking and flaming and in generally much worse shape than ours. In fact, I'm just gonna wait until the burn drive is activated again, and we're gonna finish it off by ramming it. Apparently it didn't even happen, but you can also use the burn drive to kind of like, just even if you don't kill the enemy sh small enemy ships, you can use the burn drive to really push them out of the way. You can also, uh, the burn drive also works on, um, on smaller ships than this Dominator here. In fact, I'm going to just try and, uh, if we just go to Fleet here and we go to Buy, and we go to the Black Mark, no, apparently the Ludic Pass isn't selling the right ships here, but if you get a smaller ship, whatever you do, don't ram a bigger one, because of what we've done so far with the Dominators, we've ran, sh we've ran ships that are our size or smaller. I haven't seen what happens, with the, what happens with the bigger one, but trust me when I say, I rammed a space station with a Dominator before, it went awful. Really, really awful. I lost the ship in two seconds. In fact, I think less. It's like one and a half seconds. I was counting. If you're wondering how that happened, the sh space station had mines. <laughs> and I flew it to them. And it blew up. And it was horrible. And I reloaded the save and never did again. Right. So that covers it for the Dominator and the Burn Drive. We are now going to just exit this game again without saving because we pretty much just flew into a Ludic Path Patrol and then had to exit the game and they lowered our combat readiness. So we don't even want that. What we're going to do now is we're going to go into one of the missions and then uh, play with one of the ships they give you because um, we're going to play with one of the ships that they give you because I don't actually have this ship unlocked in any of um, my playthroughs. So this uh, this uh, mission here is a lie. This actually isn't a diffi medium difficulty mission. It's a hard difficulty mission because of how well equipped the enemies are. So this may be a terrible way of showing this actual uh, ship system in action, but I try my best and I can't really show you anything else because none of my saves actually have this because this is actually a very rare ship. So the ship itself is called the Doom. And we're just going to deploy all of our ships and then click go. And now I'll show you the Doom in action. So the unique thing about the Doom is that it can't actually activate shields ever. Instead of activating shields, what it does is it slips into a different dimension the moment you right click. And when you do, everything around you kind of slows down. To enemies, it will look like you're zipping around a lot faster because while in the different dimension, you will not be able to be hit by bullets whatsoever. I'm just gonna fly closer to these enemies here so I can show you what I mean. They will start firing at me. Very soon, I'm pretty sure. If this guy would just actually okay maybe i'm actually killing this guy but yes here as you can see this missile here i'm just flying right through it i'm going to avoid it and now i'm actually going to activate the special ability which is the phase mine you can activate it multiple times but it will use a flux each time you use it pretty much how the phase in fact yeah that's actually an excellent way to show it off i've never actually used the phase mine as well as you see there so that was like a real kind of i guess you call it a fluke actually i have never actually used the phase mine to my to the best of my ability that well before so pretty much what it does when you activate it is it'll deploy this mine you can spam it over and over if you have enough flux until it needs to recharge any point defense weapons can kill it but when it explodes it does a massive amount of flux damage on whatever ship it's used on um this may not seem like it's the best ability right now because the enemies are really really kicking my ass here well kind of anyway Oh, I almost got hit by that bullet there. And also, I'm um, trying to keep my flux low enough to actually properly fight the enemies. But trust me when I say, if you were, for example, to try and use the phase mine against an enemy cargo freighter, then 
it will do massive, massive damage because the cargo freighter most likely won't be able to get away. And there, you can see again, I, I just completely overloaded this enemy ship here, and I was able to just like really damage, and now I'm just gonna sh finish it off with missiles. Yeah, one of my ships did die there though, unfortunately. Also, uh, before I end this guide, in case you're ever fi uh, fighting against a phase ship here, and you're wondering how the heck you can ever kill them because they're always in their stupid different dimension and they are never ever actually there. Like here, the fighters here, I don't care about them because I can kind of just phase through them and avoid all the bombs here and kind of be like, ha ha suckers, see you later. I'm even going to drop a bunch of phase mines maybe even on the fighters. If you're wondering how you combat one of these phase ships, the answer is simple. You just keep firing over and over again in... In fact, yeah, you can see what the fighter's doing. But you keep firing at whatever location the ship is, and eventually, their enemy ship's flux will run out, and they will be unable to cloak for an indefinite amount of time. And once it runs out, the moment it does, like in fact right here, you can see the enemy's doing it, you hit them hard, and you don't let up, and you try and rip apart all their shields and stuff. Like, like this is what's happening here. All those missiles hit me, and I was trying to wait for my um, uh, flux to dissipate. Also, you can vent uh, flux in um, phase ships, which is an excellent idea that you should do. But also, the moment you're emptying the flux, you may be end up being a real sitting duck. Right there, you can see like the, you can see one of the uh, phase mines in action. It destroyed all of the enemy fighters immediately in just like one hit. So yeah, this pretty much covers the doom and the phase mine. The reason why I'm only covering the doom is because I looked through the wiki. And the Doom is literally the only unmodded ship that even has the phase mine ability. Yeah, you have other phase ships, but they can't drop phase mines. And that pretty much covers it for this hopefully short guide on star special abilities, ship special abilities. I hope you use them a lot more often right now. I hope you're more willing to use the um, abilities that don't have any downsides, such as the accelerated ammo feeder and um, flare launchers. And... I hope you tune in for another one of my videos if you choose to watch. You don't have to, and you definitely don't have to subscribe if you want to. All your choice, and I don't mind what you do, because everyone deserves to choose what they do. That was kind of uh, anticlimactic and redundant for me to say. But whatever. My video, I guess I said it. And uh, that's it for now. Um, bye for now.